Okay, we're live on uh, YouTube. Let's get this video up to 50,000 views. If everybody could share it after, that'd be great. We're going to get a lot of views anyway on my channel, but everything helps. If you don't want to uh, watch it later because you're here now, it's perfectly fine. Just hit like. That's uh, how YouTube uses their algorithm for SEO. So we're going to give a uh, SK Cryptos here. We're going to give a uh, hopefully short, under one hour explanation on everything that's been going on, how it works, the breakdown of percentages. Those of you that are here, it'll pay off for you because you can see that there's already people not understanding that the, uh, especially with the futures V11, they're not already understanding that that's not even, you know, you're just seeing the first interface of it. It's not up to par yet. It's not up to scratch, whatever you want to say. That is not how, you know, it's going to operate. Like what, right now you're just seeing the, like basically it's live for a couple hours. You're seeing what the interface looks like, but there's a lot of stuff he's doing tomorrow to add like funds into it, stuff like that. So uh, I'll let SK take it away. I'll ask all the questions because usually people are kind of shy, which is fine. I got a list of questions, so it'll make this uh, flow nicely. So just start where you like, and then we'll just go from there and just knock these uh, topics down one by one. And hopefully, well, you have the patience to simplify it for everybody best, best on here to do it. And because uh, I don't have the patience, as people know, anger management classes still. And, wow. Uh, that's why you're here. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, right. okay, let's go. Let's start where you want to start. And then we'll just knock down each section. And then, uh, yeah, we'll get this thing up on YouTube and we'll get some new investors in. Let's go. All right. Feel free to jump in at any point and guide me with those questions, man. It's good to see you again, Crypto Kingdom. Uh, it's your boy, SK Crypto K, and it's always hard to have some of these live uh, conversations, especially when things are like in flux and we're in the inner room and things aren't even finalized yet, right? But um, it looks like uh, Futures V11 is the latest update that's come out. It sounds like and appears to be very heavily tied into the health of the ecosystem overall. So a lot of the updates were for sustainability and being tied to Bertha. All right. And uh, as as it stands right now, um, there's this new trunk supercharger that hasn't uh, gone online yet. And then Bertha's going to get some funding, like you had mentioned, um, sometime tomorrow. And then at which point we'll just see how the community reacts. I think that for larger wallets, especially, um, uh, they're going to feel some short term pain. Uh, and we can see some of the UI changes already right now, but you have uh, what would be in your available currently uh, versus a, uh, an optimal number that's in your parentheses. So if this was running as before, uh, I would have 3.1 thousand right there, um, but clearly that's not the case. And I think that the available is now tied to some sort of number with Bertha, uh, 0 0.5% of Bertha which her dollar value, you know, is is really low right now. So whenever that gets funded, we'll see how that uh, carries forward. But really, most of the updates have to do with this new thing called the supercharger. So previously on futures, 100% of all inflow would uh, come into futures and half of which would just buy Elephant token outright and go directly into Bertha. And then the other 50% was split between these, you know, these turbines, and then you've got a BNB reserve and a rainy day fund, all of those things we've covered before. Um, that's how it previously used to be. And now uh, with this V11 update, um, it's now heavily geared towards trunk. So um, the same percentage going to the trunk turbine is still there. It's 20% that goes into that, which has a 1% APR outflow that goes into Bertha. But now you have this thing called a trunk supercharger, which uh, takes 40% of inflow. And this has an APR of 50. Yeah, 50% 50 APR outflow from this that will sell trunk and buy elephant for Bertha, right? And Bertha is ultimately... Uh, what's tied to your available numbers, and Bertha is what pays the liabilities of futures. So those are the high-level overview 
uh, updates that have come to V11. Any any questions on that? Okay, let's go with uh, Leonard W. You're up. At least you were up. Maybe not. Maybe he's gone missing. Oh, uh, oh Leonard, I hear you. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, yes. How's it going, down? Hey, so like my question, and I know this is in flux. So um, are we going to have a diminishing availability to strengthen the other components, or is this just still in flux and we'll have – because uh, I'm looking at those, and I know, you know, like you were saying before, the infrastructure is not up yet. So – just if I don't know how much you guys know or how much you guys could share so I can understand, you know, what access do we have to futures or if you guys even know. Um, unsure, honestly. That's why, again, it's hard to do this live. Uh, but I do know, I think I heard on a voice chat or a message today in Elephant, Maine, that there is one million trunk I think a million trunk that is going to be added to the supercharger number. So right now you see 13.8 K and that has a 50% outflow that feeds into Bertha. I also believe that Bertha will be funded with 100 K uh, initially. And that uh, should raise everything back to normal. Um, and then dependent on what the community does, if people are compounding, things are going through, people are buying trunk. That supercharger, which is going to be gathering more trunk, buying uh, elephant, and then uh, futures being funded with ten percent of the inflow now is um, is is going to either keep the rate where it's at, or futures just kind of you know is going to hobble along um, with these sustainability updates. It looks like they're you know my gut is that there's going to be some short term pain until trunk really does go parabolic which BT is going to be, you know, not only going to invest fast with a booth, he's going to be talking to his old friends at Fidelity, things of that nature. In addition to other insti uh, institutions, firms, hedge funds, like deep pocketed people, I think uh, I can quote him from the main chat today saying a wall of money is on its way. And the focus of that is going to largely be saved out finance with the borrow saving that you can do over here, as well as uh, the trunk chart overall so um anything that's sub one dollar trunk is an opportunity gotcha gotcha okay so but i i guess uh so the information right now that's even i got you so it's that the i don't think the question that i'm i'm really interested in i don't think that could be answered right now but but i think it's kind of answered but you know i'm just trying to get a gauge to you know how to um, how dramatic it's going to be, but I guess we'll find out in the next few days. Yeah, yeah, I think it's going to take some time before some of these things really get fleshed out. Um, you know, because I'm I'm learning this right alongside you guys, and uh, yeah, so personal bonus, all of that stuff, from what I understand, stays the same. However, this really uh, helps out with the smaller accounts. So, say if you've already been, you know, in futures for a few months, and you've got a I don't know, five or 10K balance, then, you know, you can still uh, compound like normal. You're available will likely match, you know, whatever the optimal number would have been anyway. Uh, but for the larger account, so you can even see on my 111K balance right there, uh, my optimal uh, would be 3.1K, but, you know, I'm feeling that burn right now. I've only got $4 to my name right now. And from what I understand, if I were to compound this at this very moment, uh, with $200, that would just purely go into my total value, $200 plus a compounded $4 amount. So not the optimal. The optimal is dependent on Bertha's health, which, you know, uh, reading between the lines with what BT's been uh, telegraphing out there is more so that by tying the health of futures to the health of the ecosystem, which right now, isn't that good in regards to elephant and Bertha. Um, that sustainability measure means that as trunk does rocket up and start feeding into Bertha, if the herd isn't going to buy elephant for Bertha, then trunk will. 
Savannah House will, uh, futures deposits will. Um, but that ultimately is what's going to tie into uh, Bertha's dollar value lifting up such that this new mechanic doesn't even come into play. Like, hopefully the optimal number will always be reached once the system is is actually healthy, once birth is at a healthy level. And then this also means that BT won't need to babysit the system and have to, you know, come into this trunk supercharger and change the outflow APRs and all of that. Um, this system now is uh, designed to run uh, whether BT is around or not. Gotcha. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I think I think at this particular point, there's uh, you know, we just have to let the the weekend actually go by and just get the fine details, you know. But thank you, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you for the question, Leonard. No problem. All right, I guess Crypto Kingdom. What are uh, some of your initial thoughts? I know that you're looking at this stuff for the first time today. I know that you've got uh, quite a few wallets that you've um, shown on your YouTube channel and you're, you're pretty heavily invested in this. And I know you've got a really healthy trunk bag as well. So any, any thoughts you have crypto kingdom? Uh, yeah. Business as usual. That's how I, uh, that's how I make money here in crypto. I mean, it's business as usual. Use the system, how you ever, how you've used it before and it'll correct itself quicker than, uh, like I said, last time people didn't understand the V10, I guess we were at. And then, you know, four days later, everybody's ecstatic. Look at the APR. It's gone crazy, you know. So if you use it and uh, he knows what he's doing when he's building this stuff. So obviously when this was built, this was built and designed better for more longevity, uh, you know, activity and uh, more sustainability. I mean, that's that's why there was a few changes here. Of course, in the first hour, you can't uh, assess anything or a couple hours. I have three or four voice messages from him that I haven't listened to yet with a lot of it because each one's about you know, a few minutes long and we were doing this. But there's a lot of information, in those uh, voice messages that I got uh, regarding this. I just haven't uh, had time to listen to it yet. But I'm not one to, uh, yeah, I don't make uh, conclusions on anything. It needs uh, some days here to run. And then after that, uh, it, it'll correct itself. I mean, it's just if everybody uses it the same as usual and uh, the trunk buys start coming in, uh, we'll get new people in. And, uh, yeah, I'm not too uh, not too worried about it at all. I'm actually – I'm always happy when there's changes because I know the changes are done for a reason and they've always been better. So why would V11 not be better than V10? Obviously, if you don't understand it, there's something in there that you're not grasping yet because it's brand new, but it's definitely – not designed to go backwards it's designed to go forward and if anybody should be worried about it it probably should be me because i'm probably the top guy in futures money wise and uh, i have over a million trunk so yeah i'm heavily invested here this is why i do this and this is why i offered to help at one of the shows maybe closer to florida run the booth with them i was featured in crypto magazine for a reason so i know what i'm doing here i know how all this stuff works in the sense of I know how to make money in this space. So, uh, yeah, just stay calm and let it play itself out. It's like when Bitcoin was at 12K, a lot of people panicked. I was buying more. People thought I was crazy. And then all of a sudden, oh, geez, 60, 70, whatever. So, anyways, uh, let it play out. And uh, we'll move on to uh, another question here. But uh, one more question, then we'll move, you know, if it's about futures, okay. And then we'll move on to uh, next topic. We don't want to uh, spend too much time on futures just because it's not in certainty 100% yet. Uh, so we don't want to say stuff that isn't like uh, in stone. So uh, we got bio. I guess it's bio dad. Let's see what he has to say. Okay, you're up. bio dad i know that guy oh yeah you do yeah, hey, you hey sorry I, yeah i was asking if you could hear me but i was muted so on my side oh hey, there appreciate you, go. you uh yeah appreciate you giving me a few seconds here on the mic um you hey sk you started to go there when you were describing uh the mechanics on the available and an optimal section of your your uh account I, I just want to dive a little bit deeper in that one. I'm the same boat as you, as you know, because I was pinging you in the chat earlier. Um, 
is what happens in the situation where as the personal rate decay takes place, because obviously I'm in no hurry to hit the, to do anything rash here. I'm like the gentleman who just spoke, right? You know, that um, this will balance out over time. Um, you know, I'm, I'm confident of that. But what happens now with that optimal, the, the percentage or the amount in parentheses and every day that goes by our personal decay declines, you see where I'm going? And we don't want to necessarily cut, I mean, I'm guessing we don't want to compound. Here's, here's, I guess the dilemma is this. If you compound now, you get what's showing, not in the parentheses, correct? And if so, correct. then, you know, we all, we, we don't want to lose the amount in the parentheses. I mean, I, and I'm fine just compounding it. I don't have to claim it back to my checking account per se. Um, but at some point, as we wait for the system and the health of the protocol to take hold, our personal rate will continue to decline, decline, decline. Um, you see where I'm going with this? I, I'm just trying to figure out at what point, you know, is there a situation where we'll just lose whatever's left in the parentheses, I guess, is kind of what I'm driving at. Yeah, I think I follow you. Um, let me see if I how best to answer this. So I do think that... Okay, so personal bonus, right? Um, we know that the max APR is 182.5 when you add your personal bonus plus the base yield, which whatever is 14% right now. And that collectively declines roughly 4% uh, per day. So I think that tomorrow if I came in and this 154 figure reads 150, uh, my parenthesis number will also go down. Like this is the... correct. I think optimal number represents what would rate. be if current yeah rate. current rate if Bertha were healthy. So I also that that also I'm glad you asked that question too because now it kind of makes sense the logic behind this. So uh, at the moment when Bertha is completely tiny as she is right now, my available four dollars is based on half a percent of Bertha's total amount. Now. When Bertha becomes healthy, it's like a light switch gets flipped. I think that the logic changes back to what V10 used to be, uh, which was the personal bonus and whatnot. And as long as Bertha's healthy, yeah, your personal bonus, you know, your your compounding, whatever to keep that up, or you let it decay, all of that is as if V10 was was still here. But at the moment, what we're seeing is because Bertha hasn't been injected with funds, the supercharger hasn't been injected with funds. Um, we've got this, uh, yeah, this light switch that's been flipped on the on the downside, you know, and that's what we're looking at. So yeah, no, really, really good question. Yeah. So in essence, the the folks with slightly bigger futures accounts definitely start taking an even bigger haircut in support of the protocol over time. So, um, you know, yeah, I, I, yeah. in in a sense, it's almost our way of contributing back. In a sense, <laughs> no, I'm just trying to make you know, glasses half full. Uh, no, I appreciate that. I mean, I always, I'm that kind of perspective too. You know, I can't change uh, any of the circumstances that happen in life. I just, you know, control how I react to it. And, um, you know, you know, for, for people that don't need their futures every single day or however they've been using it, you know, that's fine. Um, but yeah, larger accounts are definitely going to feel uh, this short-term pain until you know these next few months where trunks uh gonna be going up this parabolic curve that BT's confident about and that's when things kind of kind of change now i think i saw another question uh somewhere in the chat earlier today and I, I was curious about it too but like if i you know uh why is it that if i put in two hundred dollars right now why wouldn't uh like if i claim okay i get it yeah i claim out four bucks you know that that protects bertha get i get that but if I'm compounding, why wouldn't I just get my optimal amount to grow my balance, right? So that, that would encourage uh, compounding. And I think I saw one of the reactions being that, well, you know, if you did that, the daily liabilities would just, you know, inflate, um, which kind of makes sense. So it curbs the daily liabilities uh, because overall, I mean, you know, anytime Bertha gets the health and the daily liabilities are too great, they'll just drain Bertha right back down until the supercharger puts it back in. And then ultimately, that just puts too much uh, sell pressure on on the trunk token when we're really trying to keep it out of the LPs. 
So uh, hopefully that clarifies some things for people um, because I was curious about that too. And um, just to briefly look at something here, but uh, the admin in in Elephant Main, uh, Digida, uh, really keeps up with this pretty regularly. And I think the day he had posted that like, you know, we we all understand the fundamentals of supply shock and, and the constant product formula and how that relationship goes is when we pull all of these tokens out of the actual circulating supply, what's available on the market, um, you can really squeeze that price upward and and, and go up that uh, parabola pretty quickly. And it looks like right now, when you look at just this green box, I know there's a lot going on right here, but when you look at what's uh, inside of your burn, uh, the burn wallet, which Bertha was burning it, now she's not really burning anything because she's tiny. But when she does get back up, she she does burn. Uh, that plus the turbines, plus Solend, plus Trumpet, you're looking at, you know, 61% of all of uh, max trunk supply being locked up in there. So that that's a pretty healthy number, uh, which is nice. And I know that Digida uh, monitors the Trumpet staking for sure. And, um, you know, what, what wallets are redeeming, whether they're redeeming to put it on Solana and save that finance or they're redeeming to dump, they, you know, eventually... Um, the the I don't want to say bad actors, but the people who just are, don't see the long term vision. You know, once they dump, they they eventually do run out of uh, ammo to do that. But this is a uh, a promising stat to look at when you look at uh, how much is actually pulled out of supply. So wanted to throw that out there too. Pretty cool. Thanks, gentlemen, for the time. Thank you. Yes, sir, Mister Biodad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's move on from, uh, let's leave futures alone for now. It's too new. Let it, you know, I think people, are, you're seeing it at rock bottom, worst case scenario. Don't just ignore the screen for 24, 48 hours. Just do that. Just go play. <laughs> go do something. Yeah. Just don't think about Touch it. Touch grass. Touch grass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Work on a property like mine. It's fun. Um, let's take a look at uh, where do you want to jump over to next? Do you want to take a look at the uh, save.finance? Do you want to look at the trunk token? I think, I, yeah, I, I, there's a lot of questions about the USDC. Oh, why can't I take it out? You know, the, you know, just read read the chat all day. You lose your mind looking at these questions that come up. But hey, that's what's there. Yeah, so. yeah. So Save Finance right now. Um, this was formerly called Solend. They had already been planning a, a rebrand at some point. Anyway, and this went into effect uh, over the last month. But essentially, you've got a trunk USDC pool. And uh, what you can do here with this borrow savings lending, you know, platform that they are on Solana, um, you could either supply USDC, which would be the safest route, um, or you could supply your trunk and then leverage up to 20% against that trunk uh, borrowed out as USDC, and then you can do whatever you need to with those funds. Um, But USDC right now, if people can't take out, it's because of this relationship between the deposits of USDC versus the borrow amount. So um, they're pretty much, you know, there's no wiggle room between the two. So if you've deposited uh, $100,000 of USDC and there's not $100,000 of buffer in between the borrow and deposit amount, your USDC is essentially trapped. Um, So for People that like futures uh, and they like that passive income and daily yield that's generated and compounding effect, um, save.finance is likely your next best option. Even though right now you can't get your USDC out, it doesn't always stay that way as new USDC deposits come in or if people pay off their borrowed USDC amount, that'll spread a gap right there. And um, it's not quite as high of an APR as as futures, but it's still pretty nice given that it, it does compound multiple times daily. Um, it is far more liquid than you know your futures would be uh, by far, even though like right now it's not. But uh, majority of the time, you know you'd be able to pull out you know whatever USDC you need. But you know the deposit APR being ninety two percent is just ridiculous in my opinion, and um, and awesome too if you are a USDC supplier. Uh, a, a number of uh, updates have gone into this version of Save.Finance as opposed to what happened a month ago um, where anybody could be a liquidator. And then also um, there was a haircut if you were a USDC supplier uh, pretty late in the game. Um, 
That can't happen here. So the USDC, uh, it's not subject to any kind of social, uh, socialization of debt. I almost tripped up on that word. Um, where it's pretty much, yeah, it's just in here, it's earning. And uh, where they're generating their fees is just from um, fees that the save.finance platform collects when people get liquidated and also just uh, just overall across their platform, they're, they're funding the, the rates that you see here. So just as a fun little exercise, you can even look at daily compound interest calculators and say you threw in, um, I don't know, 10,000 USDC and interest rate was what, 92%. It's not always going to stay there. It's going to fluctuate, obviously, but, um, but you can calculate, you know, what your daily monthly earning, uh, would be. So 10,000 in a year would grow to a principal balance of 25,000. You're looking at monthly earnings, you know, uh, 280 to start. And then the next month, you know, 800, 900, and it just kind of grows over time. And so that ends up being a viable alternative to, to futures if people don't like that. Um, but yeah, this is kind of the focal point for BT uh, for the next while, just because this is this is banking. This is something that exists in TradFi, but you get way better rates in DeFi. And this is where folks are really going to be um, jumping in, not only to supply USDC, but people that want to leverage against their trunk. They have that option. Whereas, you know, if you think about elephant token over uh, 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 last October, you didn't have that option. It was either, you know, hold or just, you know, sell. Those are your only two options, right? Whereas this, you, you've, you've got an option, a third option, which would be to collateralize against your trunk if you wanted to and, uh, and play this game as well. So many, any questions on that? And make it yeah. clear to people that they, you can't lose here. Like everybody, oh, my money, I can't get my money out. Like you might have to wait, like you said, but you know, you're not going to, the USDC is a safe play. If you're looking for low risk, that's what you want to do. Go ahead. No, no problem at all. Okay. So, uh, but also with the uh, USDC lockup, you can't even um, repay your loan, correct? Uh, no, I mean, you can. So if you've supplied USDC and borrowed against your USDC, uh, as yeah. long as you're coming into the system with uh, more USDC, so you would have this repay tab. Oh, man. Actually, my Zoom function messes that all up. But this repay tab right here, um, you know, you put in 100K USDC, you borrowed uh, 10,000 against it. You can come yeah. in and pay any amount of, of that 10,000 that you owe uh, just by on the repay tab. Okay, so so and just to, just to follow you, um, so I mean, I, I didn't start off with a lot. I don't think I only have like six, or I'm sorry, about forty five. So I I put in roughly about two twenty one hundred in the USDC side, but I actually went in there to experiment a couple of days in a row, and I tried to do like um, you know repay, and there was nothing happening. So based on your logic, you're saying if I go in there to basically activate that, I'll have to put more money in first, and then try to do the repay. Is that how I'm understanding you. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes the site's a little bit glitchy too. I know some people try yeah. to interact and they get error messages, but yeah, no, 100% you'd be able to repay this. Um, also such that, you know, if you put in 100K USDC, borrowed out 10K, you know, you, you still have a huge uh, window in between your, this white bar right here is your max uh, borrow amount versus your yeah. liquidation amount. So you would also be able to if you didn't have fresh usdc you could come in and uh given that the, the, there would be a buffer right between the borrow and um uh supplied usdc you you should be able to remove some of your supplied usdc and then pay down the loan as well so you, you would have that option but as crypto kingdom you know mentioned too this is always going to be in flux. You know, people are going to be coming in. People are going to be bringing in outside USDC to pay off their loans. And every time that happens, uh, it creates that buffer in between these two. And when that buffer spreads between the deposit and borrows, uh, it also drops these rates. So the deposit uh, APR would go down. Uh, borrow APR would go down as well. Gotcha. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. And another fun little tip about save.finance, if I can find it, but I think if you click on where it says account number one, 
you get this uh, little option right here. Or no, no, maybe it's overview. Ah, okay, but sorry, my bad. You come by account number one, hit overview, and then you have an earnings tab right there. This is where you would be able to see um, your entire history of supplied trunk and USDC. So if you're looking at, you know, how much have I put in or earned since I threw my 10,000 in, you know, uh, 12 days ago, you'd be able to see your uh, your total. Oh my gosh, my Zoom thing's so messed up. But your total interest earned, you'd be able to see uh, how much USDC your account has actually grown. And, and then it'll give you a history log of everything you've done down here as well. So, and cool, my, my trunk is, you know, uh, supplying trunk does not earn you a lot of yield, by the way, uh, only USDC does, but I have earned a dollar and 44 with my supplied trunk. So, hey, I'll take it. Yeah, so uh, basically what we're getting to is it's it's business as usual. Like, uh, let's just continue to use everything how we have been. And um, the new buys, the trunk, the new investors, especially when I get this on YouTube, this video is going to fly. Um, you know, we're going to get new people in every video I do, brings new people in. And I'm personally bringing in new people that are in real estate, stuff like that, who have never bought crypto before. That's why I was introducing them to futures and the save.finance because they're used to like Airbnb and getting solid rent checks, just passive income. So before I, you know, even trunk is a pretty good play because I, I have an idea of where it's going to go in my head money wise, but that's me. I've been doing crypto, you know, 10 years. So getting new people in, if you want to bring new people in, these are your, your two safest options where, Hey, you don't want to make a fool of yourself buy a token. You know, these days it's still, you know, Bitcoin's going up and down. We do, we're not a hundred percent sure yet of when it's going to take off. So these are still your two best, you know, your USDC and your futures V11 once it corrects itself, which it will, guarantee it will. I know this, it will. Um, you know, these are your two safe plays to bring people into. Yes, you can bring them into trunk, but I mean, if you're bringing people in new to crypto and they want the lowest risk, these are still, you know, we need fresh futures wallets and we need new, yes, we need new trunk buyers as well. But uh, everybody's seen the split there on the page of how the 100% of the futures deposit breaks down. Realistically, it all helps the system. So, um, you know, especially with the futures and the trunk buys, that's what we want. But again, if you're bringing new people in, you want the safest route. And you don't want to make a fool of yourself if there's like a $0.05 cent dip in the price. Because you know how people are, especially if they're new. Bring, bring them in at $0.60 cents or 58.9, and then it drops to 55. They're going to, you know, go crazy like the first hour looking at the new futures V11. So uh, I just continue to say business as usual. Um, bank tellers, you know, I've been in this business 10 years. He's one of few people that builds everything himself. He understands it himself. Everybody else has teams and they don't know how to do everything. He basically knows all aspects of how to build it, how to make money. He's doing this because he's got to make money for himself. I've got to make money. I'm protecting myself by bringing more people in. In the sense of, you know, hey, I got to watch my money too. Even though I've got money, I don't want to lose any money. So this is why I'm, we're spending time, me and SK, uh, doing these, you know, videos. We've got two and a half hour AMAs, you know, on Elephant on YouTube already getting 10, 15, 20,000 views. Everything helps uh, that we do. And that's why we're doing it. We're not only trying to help everybody learn, but we are trying to protect our own money as well. There's no point in me sitting back and, you know, watching all these people say stuff in the group that just don't understand what's going on here. We got to work our best individually to understand this and bring other people in and explain it correctly to them. And uh, I think there's no better place other than the elephant group than to come here because we, we know what we're doing. We're not new to crypto. We're highly invested in here as well. We're not just two guys that are saying, hey, do this, do that. We can show you screenshots. Look at my old videos. I've got over half a million, 600K in futures myself. Um, so we're not only, you know, showing you this, we're pr pretty much the top holders in here too, it, uh, to a certain extent. I know there's other big players in here too that I've gotten in personally, but uh, they're just guys that invest and just, hey, when do I sell? When do I sell? They don't really follow it like we do. So we're just trying to help everybody out, you know, which in turn helps us out. So, you know, anybody can DM me. I always say that in all my videos. If you have a legit question uh, and, you're, you know, you're really 
uh, care about the project, you don't want to put some crazy question up on the screen, you know, DM people, we'll get back to you. So, um, yeah, I just say business as usual. I wouldn't let anything. I mean, I see some questions coming up in the elephant group. Oh, it's like they act like futures V 11s really, really changed. It really hasn't actually just the, the breakdown of being an elephant token. Now the trunk tokens changed a bit, but I think the numbers in the end are going to be stronger this time around. If you give it a little bit of time, I think the entire system is going to be stronger for futures, uh, this time around. Um, and I think we're going to get a lot new, uh, a lot of new holders on there. I think we're going to hit the 4,000 mark for a number of wallets pretty quickly. We were going up pretty quickly lately. If you looked at the last couple of weeks, we went from like 3,600 to 37, wherever we're at now, we went up 130, 140 pretty quick, which is still very small considering where I think we should be. We should have a million holders in futures, but uh, we'll get there. It's just going to take, uh, you know, a better market and more people doing a little bit of side work, bringing people in but it should be expanding a lot faster because it is a great system. And so is the uh, save.finance really good here. Now, I don't know what else. Uh, is there anything else we want to uh, talk about while we're in here? Just uh, I'm trying to think. I always kind of blank out a bit. There's always a lot of stuff that I was thinking about. But. Nah, you, you're good. I think we covered most of the pertinent aspects and we're approaching the 45-minute limit. I know you wanted to keep this under an hour. Um, the only other thing I would say is even though save.finance is not personally built by BT, this specific pool um, is customized by BT using their parameters. So he, you know, using his know-how um, understands the best way, you know, for USDC suppliers to make money over time. And he's, you know, configured everything, like how much of a curve this borrow APR goes up, deposit APR goes up, depending on users. And, um, you know, even, even if you hear from BT, he's convinced that even though right now, you know, this trunk USDC pool is number two on this overall platform. And this is the second largest um, borrow savings platform over on Solana chain. But he he uh, does see that will eclipse the main pool TVL uh, at some point because, you know, people got to keep in mind that trunk is going to be the sole focus of, of the herd and, um, and BT for the next, you know, bull run, whenever that does actually come to fruition in 2025 or what have you. But but trunk is that that friction list token. There's no uh, fee collected. There's no taxes. Right. And um, that's what makes it easy to put it over onto uh, Solana chain. That's what makes it easy to have a pool like this on save.finance. Um, and so trunk, you know, as we get that those LPs drained out, um, this should fly in a parabolic fashion. So I think BT's goal is is to smash one billion market cap. Uh, with Trunk, which I think puts that at an $8.50 more or less price on Trunk. And, you know, every dollar milestone that we hit on the way there, you know, you have to imagine BT actually gets to sit down at the table and and talk with these people who now take the protocol seriously. Like, oh, yeah, you're, you're $1 billion market cap. Okay, what, what, what kind of what kind of partnership can we get into, you know, uh, with this hedge fund or whatever. And then, you know, next thing you know, in the bull run, we go from 1 billion market cap to 3 billion market cap, 5 billion market cap. And as trunk price flies, it really does just open up um, all sorts of possibilities for trunk suppliers here who just want to borrow a little bit against their USDC. They can, but those options also uh, flow back into futures as well because of of what's in save.finance, a, a, a huge chunk of this is the Savannah House entity, you know, that foundation, that DAO. And those funds are going to be flowing back uh, into Bertha in, a, in addition to, you know, what's happening with the turbine and the trunk supercharger. But, um, you know, all these loans that came out of Bertha that went to Savannah House, those loans are going to be repaid back two, three fold or higher uh, directly back into Bertha. So, you know, all those possibilities open up uh, as Trunk flies. And I think this is this is the new flywheel. So anyone who's coming in brand brand new, fresh to the ecosystem, you want to really look at Trunk and get anything below uh, $2, I'm going to say, is the opportunity. $2 Trunk is, is, is amazing. Um, it's a steal right now, in my opinion. Um, but that that's really the opportunity here. And uh, so Trunk. Then look at save.finance for, you know, your USDC supplying so that you can get, you know, passive income from that. And then, you know, futures would probably be my third pick. 
and then everything else is just completely in a a uh, main or uh, sidelined, if you will. So elephant token, uh, I'm not going to talk about that. I'm not going to talk about NFTs. Like all of that's sidelined. All of that's dependent on like a healthy Bertha, and we get a healthy Bertha from Trunk's parabolic rise. And then as Bertha gets big, you have to remember it's circular too, because a big Bertha also buys and burns more trunk and then uh, mints and burns more trumpet. So um, trunk right now with the futures um, supercharger and the turbines, they feed into Bertha and then Bertha returns that circle back by burning trunk. And then it just keeps that uh, supply shock momentum going. And then eventually, I don't even know when 2026, what have you, you're going to see elephant tokens, third parabolic run, uh, new all-time highs, Bertha with a dominating position above 200 trillion tokens. And yeah, it's going to be really interesting, especially when um, you don't have to really pump uh, Bertha at the expense of decimating trunk price because you have this save.finance tool. Um, people can borrow a very conservative amount, 10% of their trunk when trunk is at $30 or something ridiculous uh, you, you can really leverage against yourself and build your positions and, and make other plays across DeFi. So um, truly, we are in the infancy of all this and Trunk is going to be the focus. So um, yeah, I hope, you know, people, if you have any questions, feel free. You can ask away in my group or DM Crypto Kingdom or myself. And yeah, we'll help, you know, answer things as we understand them. And also too, I don't think we're going to see the uh, the dips we saw before. Like, we're not going to see that again. Might see a nickel here or there, like in the trunk price. But now there's a more, what do you want to call it, procedure in place to uh, to help that. Of course, there's a sell-off there. But, of course, at the end of the day, if somebody big wants to sell, they're free to sell. You can't. I've seen some weird stuff come up in the elephant group, like, oh, we got to stop seller. No, no, you got to leave oh, business. Yeah. You won't let uh, people sell when they want and buy when they want that's the way it goes it's, that's a, it's a free market man i hate those suggestions that are like oh can we put like a a 60 sell tax so we can stop these whales it's like nah bro like no one likes taxes either way like just just let the free markets you know run uh believers of the community are going to uh, look at these as opportunities to get more cheap trunk sub two dollars and sub one billion dollar market cap all of that um you know uh, eventually the, the naysayers are going to run out of ammo. You just have to box them out. You see a dump on the chart, you take advantage of it, you know, if you believe in it long term. So that's a personal decision people got to make. But, um, oh, I do see R2R is raising his hand. Maybe one last question here. He's on. Hey, man. Hey, was this recorded by chance? Yes. Sweet. Thanks, guys. That's the only question I had. Wow, that was an easy one. Thanks, Goldwyn. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, yeah, I'm just, good to just click on like. Likes. That's the only the only job is to click on like. You don't even have to listen. <laughs> yeah, like, click on the like button. Yeah. Some people like I get a lot of views sometimes, and then you'll see a video with tons of views and no likes, and you'll see one where people just kind of it's just a different type of community, and then it's got like a third less views with four times more likes. It's like what? <laughs> mm -hmm. like because that's like that's the whole youtube algorithm basically i mean that's the way it is unfortunately that's what they base uh most of it on you know they don't even care about the comments it's like just no. the like button it is. It. yeah it is because seriously the ones over a thousand likes once you get over a thousand likes on the video which uh that'd be a nice goal for this one um yeah, like that That will continually get views every day just because of where it lands. If somebody, if I tag it with Bitcoin, crypto, whatever those keyword uh, hashtags are, you know, like that just continually uh, jumps above other people. It'd be nice yeah. to do a live stream too. It'd be nice to put it like rather than recording it on here, it's nice to do the YouTube live streams because you can jump uh, leapfrog up in the uh, search results like while you're live, right? They usually put the live ones, at least they used to, right up at the top. So as you're live, you're kind of, uh, you used to anyways hit up at the top. So if somebody hashtag Bitcoin, you'd get all the videos that were pre-recorded kind of secondary. And then everybody live is kind of pushed to the top. 
which I think, yeah. you know, during the last bull run, that's how some of these kind of no-name guys got up to, like, thousands and thousands of subs because their whole content was live. So every time they went on and made something, they were right up at the top of this. They were just easier to find. That's what it was, right? So, um, yeah. No, no, for sure. Any other no, last been, questions? Yeah, it's been, pretty, it's been pretty good here. So, yeah, if anybody's got a last question about either or, futures or trunk, or save.finance, go ahead. If not, the numbers are down below here. They're in the elephant group as well. The breakdown of the 100% of the deposit going into futures is right there for you. And uh, once the money gets injected in there, I believe he said in the uh, voice message that it's he's starting to do things tomorrow with that. So uh, just wait and see. I wouldn't uh, jump to conclusion. You're seeing it at the... Uh, I wouldn't even say at a fair stage, really. You're seeing it at a stage that you really shouldn't see it at because it is live, yes, but it's not live at 100%. It'd be like, uh, it's hard to explain, but it's like <laughs> driving with half an engine basically right now because you're not really seeing it in a fair state uh, how, it, how it should look. So yeah. let's, leave it at, let's leave it at that, and then we'll do a follow-up in a few weeks. Right? And I think... Um, People will be very surprised of how fast those numbers will change, how fast like it'll flip, like a coin flipping, basically. I don't think it's going to be a slow flip. I think once it takes off, it's going to be a fast flip with those numbers, especially with the uh, whatever, however it's worded and brackets there next to your available. I think that's really going to move quickly. I don't think there's going to be any like wait, 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 and it's going to be like a slow move. I think it's just going to be fast. Especially if Bitcoin takes off too, that all that also helps. But we've been waiting three and a half years. It's kind of <laughs> getting old here. So yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you, man. Okay. All right. Very so everybody's cool. job: like the video once it's live on YouTube. We'll share it here, and we'll share in the Elephant Money group. Especially if you already watched it, and then try to. Uh, we'll get one more question. Let's see. But uh, you know, we try to. Uh, maybe we don't. Uh, lost you there. Anyways. Try to share it with as many people just to uh, get people in. That's what I'm kind of working on myself here. So thanks to SK Crypto K for sharing the screen, going over things, talks slower and smoother than anybody else that I know here. Explains it that, uh, you know, he knows what he's talking about. It's 99.99% as accurate as we can be in here. And that's all we can uh, ask for. So uh, let me get this up on YouTube and let's get some new people into the system. And let's carry on the rest of the week. The conference in Atlanta is Friday to Sunday. So I think we're going to see a good next week. And a lot of things will come out of that because there's actually real investors there, um, you know, with real deep pockets. So I think we can attract even where we're at right now, a lot of good new uh, people that aren't even knowing about this. Um, and we'll leave it at that. So everybody have a great night. And this will be on YouTube shortly. Thanks for coming in, awesome. and we'll see you in the next Thank one. Thank you for your time. Thanks, brother. Thank you.